Once upon a time, in a faraway land known as Colorado, a beautiful animal roamed the countryside, where day in and day out, it balanced the ecosystem. Traveling in packs, these predators moved with stealth, darting in and out of the shadows as they stalked the seemingly endless herds of deer, elk, and bison. The unbroken wilderness stretched further than the raven could fly, and as alphas took claim over territories of their own, it seemed this way of life would last forever. It was good to be a wolf. Then through a series of unfortunate events, the westward expansion of pioneers, the decimation of native species like buffalo, and the introduction of domestic animals like cattle, life for a wolf changed. All of a sudden, everyone was afraid of the big, bad wolf. Humans quickly decided that wolves were bloodthirsty villainous killers that must be destroyed. And this inaccurate narrative cast a long dark shadow that these animals could not control, could not rewrite, and could not escape. According to Parks and Wildlife, the last gray wolves were eradicated from Colorado in the late 1930s and have not roamed this wilderness since. Today is a new day, and with our help, that is going to change. As a child, I would dream of wolves often, with the vision that I would one day witness a pack running swiftly through a dense forest, on the hunt, and in hot pursuit of their next meal. It's a dream that has yet to come true, and for many years, the Brave Wilderness team and I have been trying to capture a meaningful episode that centers around the plight of these incredible canids. The Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center is located roughly two hours outside of Denver. All of their animals are rescues, and their mission is to educate the public about the ecological importance of wolves, coyotes, and foxes. I'm really excited. This is going to be the first time in my life that I've entered an enclosure with wolves. I'm gonna to get to meet the wolves at some point, and then the ultimate payoff will be us actually feeding some of the wolves a deer carcass. Several days ago, Darlene and her team acquired a deer that was hit by a car, and we're gonna get the chance to place that carcass in an enclosure, enter it, and watch and film these wolves actually do what it is that they do. Wolves eating. This is going to be an epic day. Today, I will be working with founder and CEO, Darlene Kababel. Early in her life, Darlene was terrified of wolves due to their misrepresentation in popular culture. Are you a good girl? My love for wolves um, started a, a long time ago, actually by rescuing a wolf dog from a shelter uh, that was gonna be euthanized. And when I rescued her, she actually became my inspiration of wanting to be a voice for wolves. This has been a long journey to get to this point here. My heart and soul goes into wanting to be a voice for wolves and um, excited about one day getting them back out into the wild. Through this relationship, Darlene overcame her fears and recognized that her path in life was to not only rescue wolves, but to help others see them in a positive light. My goal is to do the same. I have no fear around wolves. I'm genuinely excited to work with these animals, and I definitely want to make a good first impression. To prepare for this moment, Darlene suggested that I get to know some of the center's other ambassadors. So in the days leading up to my wolf encounter, I was given the chance to work with a pair of red foxes, where I witnessed their clever tactics for outwitting a human. Hi, how are you? Look at this. The same cleverness that would be exemplified by a wolf. That's cool, right? Oh, you. Oh. All right, there he goes. He's got my glove. Let's see what happens. No, no, no. Look who got the glove back. Oh, I got it. After that, Darlene introduced me to a coyote. 
Posturing and tone play a crucial role in deciding an animal's acceptance of humans. And in just a matter of minutes, I was able to earn the coyote's trust. Ah, this is amazing. Amazing. I thought it was going to take so much longer for him to get comfortable. He must know that I'm one of his friendly cousins. This was a huge step for me and demonstrates that even a timid animal felt comfortable in my presence. By successfully interacting with these smaller canids, Darlene is now confident that I am ready to advance to the next level, entering an enclosure with wolves. The wolf is considered to be one of the most intelligent and resilient animals on the planet. So how is it that they are struggling to avoid extinction? The answer is simple, humans. Wolf populations have declined due to no weakness of their own. But instead, these animals have been the victim of ruthless persecution. To date across the world, wolves have been eradicated from almost all of their original range. In the United States alone, they now only occupy 10% of their former range. Over hunting for the fur trade, eradication by ranchers who are protecting their livestock, and deforestation are just a few examples of what have driven wolves toward extinction. So here's what's happening. This is the first time a film crew has ever gone in with a roadkill deer to film wolves. The two wolves whose enclosure we're entering are actually the wildest wolves on the property. So we're trying to make sure we're taking all the proper safety precautions before going through with this exercise. As you can see, we have a mule deer here in this wheelbarrow. The deer was struck by a car, um, and this is great. This is part great enrichment for the wolves. This is completely natural food for them to be eating. But like I said, this is the first time anyone will have entered an enclosure with these wolves to do a filming like this. So we gotta make sure we get everything right. This is gonna be wild. All right, here we go. Ready? Entering into the first gate here. This is it. All right, Darlene, I'll have you open the gate. I'm gonna to need to try to move as quick as I can to get the carcass up on the hillside before the wolves converge in on it. So you have Rockshaw here. He's probably okay. gonna be your one that's gonna take it quicker than her. Okay. Because she's up at the top, so He's one that we'll have to watch out for. So okay. The, the male. Great. Here we go. Pulling a mule deer carcass into an enclosure of wolves. All right, let's go. All right, now go ahead, you follow me. I'm bringing it up. Dinner served, boys and girls. Now what we want to do is just stay a safe distance back and the wolves are coming straight in for the carcass. Here we go. Don't want to make them feel as if they're being challenged at all. Look at that. And this wolf is so incredibly powerful. This is a small deer, right? A single wolf can pull a 150 pound deer up a hill like this. Okay, as the wolves begin to pull it, we can slowly follow to get closer. And you can see the male, the alpha male is very much going to be the first one to feed. In the pack mentality, it's always the alphas that are going to be the first one to feast. We have the female, she's the black one, running up in the background there. They're a little cautious at the moment because we have cameras in the enclosure. I see a big boy, you're good. That's for you. That's for you, enjoy, that's dinner. That's all you. That's pretty nerve wracking right there. Okay. see where the wolf takes the carcass and then we can set up and determine how we're gonna film this. Okay, I see you. I'm gonna move down slowly like this. Uh, first order of business for a wolf is to start removing that hair. They will eat some of the hair and it works as fiber through their system to remove any bone particles or parasites within the organs. He says the alpha male, he's taking charge of the situation. The female, she's very skittish right now. She notices that there's other people within the enclosure, but as she gets more comfortable, she'll come down and also start feeding. of wolves makes a kill, whether it's a deer, an elk, or a moose, 
They need to try to consume the meat as quickly as possible. There are many other vandals that will come in and steal a kill. Wolves in the northernmost range of their territory have to face things like grizzly bears and wolverines. Even something as small as a wolverine will come in and chase an entire pack of wolves off of its kill. So they want to eat as quickly as they possibly can, then they'll rip stuff apart and then take it away and stash it. I see you. That's my gift from me to you. Enjoy that deer. He's just kind of testing the limits right now, right? Walking away, making sure, okay, you're not gonna get any closer, are you? This is my deer. You think you're gonna get closer? I'll show you what a wolf can do to a coyote. So we've backed off even further from the carcass, which has opened up that level of comfort for the female. She's come down now and she's just eating some of the scraps. Yeah, some interesting little behavior there. Female came in and she was like, I'm gonna start eating. You see the alpha male is definitely taking control of the situation. By displaying his teeth and snapping, it may look as if Raksha is being overly aggressive towards Chakra, but he's not. He is visually saying, let me have my fill, you will get your turn. This is common everyday behavior for wolves, and despite the fact that it looks scary, it really shouldn't be. I have been witness to some pretty cool animal encounters, but I don't think anything tops getting to feed wolves a mule deer carcass. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. What if I told you that everything you thought you knew, that everything you feared about wolves was nothing more than a poorly written narrative constructed over 100 years ago? Think about that. What if the story has been wrong the entire time. Consider this. Of the 100 million cattle raised in the United States every year, do you know how many fall prey to wolves? 0.01%. Do you want to know how many humans have been killed by wolves in the past century? Two. This planet needs wolves more than any of us will ever understand. And most of us will never do a single thing to edit the wrongful narrative that has been written. Are you afraid of the big bad wolf? If so, go and visit the Colorado Wolf and Wildlife Center. I challenge you to face your fears, and I promise you will walk away with a newfound respect and a feeling in your heart that can only be achieved once you've looked into the eyes of a wolf. As a child, I dreamed of one day encountering wolves in the wild, and it's a dream I hope comes true in Colorado. If you live in this beautifully wild state, please support Bill 107, as this initiative will allow for the reintroduction of wolves into the wild and will put paws on the ground by 2023. We can't rewrite the past, but for the love of wolves, we can change their future. To help us bring wolves back to Colorado, click on the link in the video description below and visit the Rocky Mountain Wolf Project. Hey Coyote Pack, if you missed my earlier encounters with the Canids of Colorado, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I finally came face to face with one of my long lost cousins. And don't forget, subscribe and ring the dinner bell so that you can make friends with a coyote before the team and I head out on our next wild adventure. What a good boy. Ah, this is amazing.